वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज पंकज सिंह आस्का आई टी एन फैकल्टी वर्किंग विद आस्का आई टी एन सिंस लास्ट थ्री ईयर्स नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द चैप्टर बायो मॉलिक्यूल्स एज द नेम सजेस्ट इट इन्वॉल्व द स्टडी ऑफ दोज मॉलिक्यूल्स और दोज केमिकल कंपाउंड विच इन्वॉल्व इन बायोलॉजिकल सिस्टम विल स्टडी अबाउट कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स प्रोटीन वाइटामिन एनजाइम्स एंड मैनी मो बट विल फोकस मेनली ऑन कार्बोहाइड्रेट अमीनो एसिड्स दैट इज प्रोटीन्स एंड न्यूक्लिक एसिड्स so let's start with carbohydrates carbohydrates are compounds of carbon and hydrogen and they are basically the source of energy glucose sucrose fructose these all are carbohydrates and these provide energy so the basic function of carbohydrates is to provide energy let's start their study carbohydrates carbohydrates are actually those biomolecules which provide us energy whatever we eat is broken down into glucose and from that glucose we get energy which is used for our by our body for biological processes so uh, carbohydrates are chemically compounds of carbon hydrogen and oxygen and they are sometimes also known as sugars or saccharides and their general formula can be represented by this formula c6 h2o whole y so let's write uh, let's say if we have six carbon atoms in that case the formula will become 6 c6 then h2 whole 6 if we simplify this we get c6 h12 o6 which is actually the formula of glucose and also fructose so this is the general formula of carbohydrates the next is classification of carbohydrates carbohydrates are classified on the basis of their structure as monosaccharides oligosaccharides and polysaccharides monosaccharides actually the simplest form of carbohydrates and they cannot be broken down further into more simpler form and the, uh, the most famous uh, monosaccharides are glucose fructose galactose uh, next is oligosaccharides oligosaccharides actually contain 2 to 10 monosaccharide units joined together if they have a uh, two monosaccharides units joined together they will be known as disaccharides if they have three monosaccharides unit they would be known as trisaccharides if they have four monosaccharides units they will be known as uh, tetrasaccharides but uh the most important uh, oligosaccharides are actually disaccharides and maltose sucrose and lactose are the example of yes a uh, disaccharides these all are formed by combination of two monosaccharides unit we will discuss their structure in detail in coming slides and these two monosaccharides and oligosaccharides mainly disaccharide monosaccharides and disaccharides are known as sugars they are also known as sugars because they have sweet taste as well as they are soluble in water and we know that sucrose is actually the general sugar which we used in our food it is cane sugar glucose is a sugar fructose is fruit sugar maltose is malt sugar lactose is milk sugar and sucrose sucrose is cane sugar which we use polysaccharides are known as non sugar carbohydrates non sugar because they are not sweet in taste as well as they do not dissolve in water they do not show the properties which generally monosaccharides and uh, disaccharides and oligosaccharides show and these include starch cellulose and glycogen the classification of sugars that means monosaccharides and disaccharides these can be classified as reducing sugars and non reducing sugar actually a carbohydrate contains two functional groups in its structure first is this carbonyl group and next is this alcoholic group these two groups are present in a typical uh, carbohydrates so those sugars that means monosaccharides and disaccharides in which this carbonyl group is free are known as reducing sugars because those can reduce felling solutions and tolens reagent because these are the uh, actually uh, 
tolerance reagent test and failing solution test is used for detection of aldehyde and ketones and those uh, who have free aldehydic and ketonic groups in them will obviously reduce tolerance reagent and failing solution so those will be known as reducing sugar so those sugars which have free functional group that means this group and those can reduce tolerance reagent test and uh, those can uh, reduce tolerance reagent and failing solution are known as reducing sugar and actually all the monosaccharides are reducing sugars on the other hand there are some sugars in which this carbonyl group is actually not in free form and they have bounded functional group that's why they cannot reduce tolerance reagent and failing solution and that is why those are called non reducing sugars now classification of monosaccharides as i told you that mono that all the sugars especially monosaccharides have a uh, carbonyl group and this carbonyl group may be aldehydic and ketonic if they have aldehydic they are known as aldoses if they have ketonic group they are known as ketoses so this is the classification if there is a carbohydrate with three carbon atoms it would be known as triose and it has three carbon atoms plus an aldehyde group so it is aldo triose if it has three carbon atoms and a ketonic group it would be known as keto triose for aldehyde aldo triose for ketonic group keto triose similar is the case with four carbon atoms if a hydro a carbohydrate with four carbon atoms has aldehydic group it is aldo tetrose if it has ketonic group it would be keto tetrose similarly if a carbohydrate has six carbon atoms and a uh, aldehydic group it would be known as aldo hexose and if it has ketonic group it would be known as keto hexose and the most famous example of aldo hexose is glucose while keto hexose is fructose the formula of both is c6 h12 o6 the difference is in functional group we'll study their structures in more details in coming videos but as for here we know that glucose is aldo hexose and fructose is aldo uh, uh, glucose is aldo hexose and fructose is keto hexose now let's have a look at some of the structures of uh, mon these monosaccharides okay so uh, the first simplest monosaccharide is glyceraldehyde and the formula of glyceraldehyde is actually c h o o h h c h 2 o h now this can be written in two form this form as well as we can write it in this form also like uh, c h o o h on this side h on this side and c h 2 o h is on this side this is known as d form this is known as l form so this is actually d glyceraldehyde and this is l glyceraldehyde so if we start with d glyceraldehyde this is the simplest form of uh, uh, monosaccharides or hydrocarbon or carbohydrates this is d glyceraldehyde and the plus sign represents that it is dextrorotatory or uh, lever rotatory for plus it is dextrorotatory for minus it is lever rotatory okay so this is d glyceraldehyde it is actually a tri it is aldo triose aldo triose okay next is if we increase this uh, carbon length by one carbon more we will add one carbon here so we get erith d erythrose or d triose if the new oh group is on this side it is d erythrose and if, if it is on uh, left side it is d uh, triose this is triose this is erythrose and these two are actually aldo tetrose four carbon atoms aldehyde group now this erith d erythrose if one more carbon atom is introduced with one oh group also so will uh, it will it will form d ribose if the new oh group is on right hand side and if it is on left hand side it would be d arabinose similarly triose can be increased to give uh, to uh, d xylose in which the new oh is on this side right side and if it is on left side it would be d lysose so erythrose erythrose give rise to ribose and arabinose while from triose we get xylose and 
lysos and these are aldopentose because these have five carbon atoms these are aldopentose next is uh, if we take ribose and we further add one more group we'll get the uh, allose if oh is again on uh, right hand side and if it is on left hand side we'll get altrose similarly rabinose gives right to glucose and mannose while xylose gives rise to gulose and idose and from lysose we get galactose and tallose now from here you'll get uh, a, an interesting thing that if we uh, talk about these two actually these two erythrose and threose have almost similar formula but the difference is that they differ in one carbon atom this car on this carbon the oh is on right hand side while on this in the same carbon in this compound it is on left hand side so such compounds such carbohydrates hydrates which differ from one another only by one carbon atom are known as epimers epimers and this carbon atom is epimeric carbon atoms and these two compounds are epimers similarly similarly you can see glucose and galactose this glucose and galactose differ from one another only by position of oh and h group at this carbon atom so these two are also epimers so epimers are those monosaccharides which differ from one another only by orientation of the group at only one carbon atom so this was uh, the structures of various monosaccharides next is kilani fischer synthesis we have just studied that we in this previous uh, slide we just studied that what we get if we increase the carbon by 1 we increase we added one more group to a aldo triose and we moved to aldo tetrose so now the question comes what is the method to increase this carbon chain and the answer is kilani fischer synthesis in this this method is used for lengthening the carbon chain of aldose and what is done in this you can see from here that this was a 1 2 3 4 a tetrose this was an aldo tetrose first of all we react with nacn or hcn in water and this group gets uh, this this was actually oh group if i write it in more broad base so it was like this oh then oh h here was ch2 oh and this was actually this group we had hcn or nacn definitely in the presence of water and this opens up actually we get a uh, uh, uh this portion similar oh here then oh here h here now difference is in this position this could be like this or this may be like cn here oh Hmm. C and and on this carbon. Oh, oh. And when this these two are further reacted with water, hydrogen gas, which is actually acidic in the presence of palladium, Ba, SO4, we uh, this group gets converted into aldehyde. This C and gets converted into aldehyde. so we get this compound so overall we what we see that we started from 1 2 3 4 carbon atom and we have now 1 2 3 4 5 carbon atoms so this is kilani fischer synthesis which is used for increasing the chain and we have just studied that what we get when we increase the carbon chain of any compound if we start with uh, mm, 
glyceraldehyde we get erythrose and threose similarly if we when we uh, proceed with threose erythrose we get ribose and arabinose so this was all about killer Killani Fisher synthesis. Next is rough degradation. This is actually opposite to the Killani Fisher synthesis in that we increase the carbon chain, but in this we decrease the carbon chain. In this, this involves oxidation of the aldose into aldonic acid. We actually oxidize that aldehydic functional group into carboxylic acid functional group to form to convert aldose into aldonic acid using bromine water and then oxidative decarboxylation of that aldonic acid which was formed uh, results in a decrease of the carbon chain like this uh, this is actually ribose we just first of all oxidize this functional group aldehyde into carboxylic acid and we got from ribose to we get ribonic acid and then we make we do oxidative decarboxylation decarboxylation basically refers to the removal of carbon co2 molecule and we are left with erythrose so this is a way to step down to decrease the length of carbon chain next is salt example which of the following is an aldopentose so we know ribose is an aldopentose it has five carbon atoms and it is formed by uh, it, uh, just we if we start we had ch2 mm, uh, we had uh, yes it was cho then oh then ch2oh then we move to cho OH, OH, CH2, OH. This, this, this is actually, this was uh, glyceraldehyde. Then from this, we used Killani Fisher synthesis to form erythrose. And from erythrose, we moved to, yes, ribose. And it was CHO then OH, another OH, one more OH, then CH2OH. So this is an aldopentose. So ribose is the correct option here. Next is, to become a carbohydrate, a compound must contain, yes, at least three carbon atoms. There must be at least three, three carbon atoms because we know the smallest carbohydrate is glyceraldehyde with three carbon atoms. So the correct option is B here. It must have at least three carbon atoms. Next is the functional group present in typical carbohydrate. We know that carbohydrates have carbonyl carbon. Uh, we have It has carbonyl functional group as well as alcoholic functional group. So these two are the essential functional groups required for a compound to be carbohydrate. So the correct option here is C. So students, now we are aware of carbohydrates. We know what are carbohydrates, what is their function and what are the different type of carbohydrates, monosaccharides, disaccharides, trisaccharides, polysaccharides and so on. So um, in our next video, we will focus on a monosaccharide, glucose, we will study its properties and preparation. Keep watching. Thank you.